I have to admit, at first I was a bit skeptical. And then I realized actually these charges in Europe, they probably should be the future of all EV charging stations. There's actually some pretty big benefits to charges like this. That um, are being overlooked, I think in Australia and in the United States and well, to be honest, for ex existing car EV chargers in Europe, they have a few downsides and they might seem like small things, but they're actually significant. Now, these new chargers solve some issues with visibility, with knowing that you can actually use a charger and with charging speed. They're actually pretty cool. I think this could be the future. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. This French charging company, they've already built a bunch of chargers in Europe and they have these kind of a, what I think is a really cool design for their new EV chargers. Basically, this charging company called Electra is saying that you should be able to see ch your chargers, right? They should be really, really visible. And it is true that sometimes uh, charging stations can be sort of right there and you don't realize they are, or you can be looking for them and not realize they're there. Have you ever had this issue? I find that charging stations, often they're quite small, they're not big, and don't stand out as much as they could. Plus, um, you often have to get out of your car, look at the charging screen to see if it works or if it's compatible or uh, various things. The cool thing about these chargers is they have these big distinctive kind of facades and the fa these big things they actually say on them if the charger is available or not in a big, big, basically in big writing saying available. And I think that's a really, really good idea. Plus, it does look kind of cool, right? It does look kind of futuristic. So the charging speed of these new chargers, it's 400 kilowatt, not super fast, but it's fast enough anyway. And apparently, this charging company called Electra has actually built out in the last few years more than 500 charging stations across Western Europe, most of them in France. But they're planning to open another 2,200 charging stations across nine European countries. And you can see here, uh, basically they're laying them out a lot like a gas station. So there's an undercover section. So I guess if it's raining or you know, really hot, you can you can basically park under cover. I think it, it does look like a gas station, but more like a modern gas station. And you're obviously not going to get oil stains all over the road, which is pretty cool. You're not going to have gas fumes either. I actually think this, these new designs look great. I think they look fantastic. And I kind of see how they could really appeal to customers be able to see them easily. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can, this, this, this place is very distinctive. These big LED screens on the pillars, they say they're available. Charging speeds are good. I mean, I'm, um, I'm a big fan. Now, apparently Electra are using LPtronic hyperchargers, and these are common in Europe. They're well known for their reliability. There was a story today here in Australia, front page news about how a lot of our chargers here are breaking down. There's a company called Tritium, and they went bankrupt. They were an Australian company who actually went onto the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, and then the company crumbled and they went bankrupt. And their charges break down all the time. Now, apparently, the reason that these Alpitronic chargers are successful is because they are known to be very reliable and they are second only to the Tesla supercharged network in terms of deployments this year kind of shows you just how many charges Tesla are actually installing in Europe. We don't hear about this very much, but Tesla is installing a, a huge number of charges. So Tesla's number one in Europe and LPtronic are number two. The stalls, as I said earlier, 400 kilowatt charging, and you can charge your EV in probably approximately 18 minutes if you've got something like the new XPNG6, or the XPNG9, or the X9, or a Zika 7X, or a Zika, you know, some of these newer Chinese EVs, they'll be able to charge in probably around 16 to 18 minutes to get from 10 to 80% on a 400 kilowatt charger. Remember, they're not just hitting peak speeds, kind of like, you know, Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6 and Porsche Taycan. 
they hit a, a peak speed, it's quite fast and they come down a lot. But I found that in these newer Chinese EVs, they don't just hit a peak speed, they hit a peak speed and they basically stay close to that peak for quite a long time. So more than half of the European Union's energy mix came from renewable energy in the first half of 2024. So this year, approximately around 60% of all the electricity in Europe will come from renewables, which means that um, you know most of these charges will probably be running on renewable energy. What do you think, guys? Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. I charge for nearly nothing at home and I just had to pay $200 to drive from one city to another. That's expensive. The averages are the same in Australia, right? Obviously, petrol is even more, diesel are even more expensive in Australia than they are in the United States. CNET took data from Tesla, who obviously have the largest fast charging network in the world, and they charge an average of 50 cents per minute versus 17 cents at home. So yeah, it's quite a bit more expensive. This is a popular myth created in the United States and Australia that charging with just public fast charging stations is more expensive than filling up your internal combustion, your petrol, gasoline, or diesel car. A lot of people think this, and even a lot of electric car owners believe this is the case. They think, wow, oh, I just paid so much money to charge my EV. It must be more expensive than gasoline or petrol. It's not actually true. I've been saying this for a while now because I actually look at the numbers and I look at the, my, my cost when I do go on road trips. It's really not accurate. Now, this new data isn't accurate either. This new data that shows that it's cheaper to charge your EV with DC public fast charging stations than it is to fill up your internal combustion car with petrol or diesel, it's not accurate. And the reason is because, well, most people don't DC fast charge all the time. What they'll do is if they go on a road trip, what do you do guys before you go on a road trip if you own an EV? You charge it at home the night before, right? Yeah, you charge it at home, you get it to 100% because you're going to go on a road trip, you want to have as much range as you can get. So actually, that's pretty cheap to do that. It's much, much cheaper. In fact, for me, it's it's generally free. I generally charge it on solar during the day. But for most people, still, you charge it at home, it's much cheaper. And this study doesn't include that information. This is purely, if you just use the DC chargers all the time, it's still cheaper. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. So here are the questions, right? Charges and not charging at home. People say, well, if you don't have an ability to charge your EV at home, you shouldn't buy an EV. It's crazy to do that then. Well, that's not actually true. A study has found that using only public EV chargers and not charging at home is still cheaper than buying gas or petrol for a regular car. Now I say all petrol, petrol and gas are the same thing, but um, obviously not everyone knows that. 